Good Wednesday evening, everybody. As you probably know, we have a tropical storm, Tropical Storm Gaston, right now in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We don't care about Gaston. Gaston is going to move off to the north and it'll be a storm for the fishes, despite the fact that it could actually become a relatively strong hurricane. It's not going to impact land. The storm we're watching is Invest 99L, and Invest 99L is this storm right here. Let me go ahead and circle it for you. And it's a largely unorganized system right now. The models are not having any luck forecasting the path or the intensity very accurately at all. So this is going to be kind of a, a watch and wait type of scenario. The reason it's called Invest 99L is because the National Hurricane Center is investigating this storm. It's not even a tropical depression or a tropical storm yet. The reason why is it does not have a defined single circulation. As you can see, we have some storminess north of Puerto Rico. We have some storminess over the Dominican. So there's basically a double barrel low with no unified circular storm like you would typically see with a lot of tropical systems. So until the system becomes one unified low pressure system, the models are going to be all over the place. And I don't think that unified system will develop until we move into the weekend. So a lot of the certainty in the path intensity and the, the direction as well, we'll have to wait until the weekend. All right, here's a look at the water vapor imagery. Again, we have the two areas of low pressure. So that's one thing fighting against the storm developing. It's also going to move into an area of dry air, as you can see in the water vapor imagery. This is also an area of wind shear as well. So the possibility does exist that this storm could actually completely fizzle and go away. Now, if it can survive the dry air, the wind shear, and also the double barrel low as it moves westward, when it gets into the western Bahamas, then we're going to see a hurricane or at least a tropical storm develop into the latter weekend and to the early part of next week. So the question is, over the next 48 to 72 hours, what will happen with this storm? Now, what are the models saying? They completely disagree. Here's a look at the European model, uh, which is normally our go-to model. It has been doing the best with tropical systems over the last, uh, I'd say, seven or eight years or so. So it is the more accurate model. Now here's a look at the 12Z model run, which is the model run from this morning. As you can see, here comes the tropical storm, which would most likely be a tropical storm when it moves into the western Bahamas. And then it actually moves into very, very southern Florida as possibly a weak tropical storm. And then it continues to move westward and takes a sharp turn to the north. And this particular path would actually be relatively rough for the Tampa Bay area. We would see the low pressure system remain offshore, which will help the storm remain relatively strong. We'll also have a bit of a southwest to northeast wind, which is not good as water will accumulate in the bay and could lead to a bit of storm surge flooding. The model then has the storm moving to the north and making landfall and uh, just east of the Panama City area and then continuing to move off to the northeast as a relatively strong tropical storm or an extra tropical storm. That is the European model. The worst part of the storm would be moving over Tampa Bay as they move into, let's see, here we are Monday morning. This is Monday morning. This is Monday evening. This is Monday night. And this is Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning is when we would see the worst weather if the European model happens to be 100% correct. All right, what about the GFS model, the American model? Typically, it hasn't done quite as good tracking tropical systems, so I, it's a difficult forecast to go against the GFS, but optimistically, I do hope the GFS is the one that ends, ends up prevailing as it is the much weaker model run. Now, remember I mentioned that there was a lot of wind shear, a lot of uh, dry air that this storm had to make it through? Well, the GFS actually sees that. And in fact, look at this as we go forward in time. Here we are on Monday. Here we are on Tuesday. Yeah, we get a bit of rain, but honestly, nothing tropical develops at all. So the GFS, the American model, doesn't have any tropical system developing, just a bit of tropical-like rain moving over the area by early next week. So that makes for a difficult forecast when the two models are completely disagreeing with each other. Now, one thing you can look at to try to determine uh, which model might be handling the storm better is you can look at model run to model run. Now here's the current model run of the European. Notice where that low pressure system is. Let's go back to a previous model run. 
Whoa, that low pressure system shifted way out in the Gulf of Mexico. So this tells me the European does not have a good handle quite on the storm yet, since even just one model run to another model run, we're looking at hundreds and hundreds of miles of difference between the position of that low pressure system. So again, very little confidence in the European forecast. The GFS has been pretty consistent in the manner that it hasn't been a tropical system developing. So it definitely predicts the weaker scenario of the two. We do have other models to look at. You've seen these before. These are computer models or also called spaghetti models. Yum yum spaghetti. As you can see just about everything agrees for the most part taking the storm to the northwest. My preferred models would be the GFDL which would be this purple one right here that goes up the spine of the state. The HWRF uh, is also another good model. Again also the purple one with the little uh, circle there that also goes up the spine of the state as well. Uh, the AVN is a good model. The uh, UK Met, which is your blue line here, also goes up the spine of the state. So the more trusty hurricane models are taking this up the spine of Florida, which would mean a much weaker scenario for a hurricane because it's not going to develop as much over land. And also the wind shear from Florida would help it not develop as well. So uh, one reason we have a difference between the European and the GFS this is the 500 millibar geopotential heights. All you need to know is that there's a high pressure system forecast to be pretty stubborn and be over the New Jersey and Carolina area. And basically that is a big bully. It will not allow any storms to move past that high pressure. So the low pressure is actually forecast to go more into the Florida Panhandle and then make a turn to the north all because of this blocking high. Now you look at the GFS model you don't see that high quite as much. So without that blocking high, that storm system is allowed to make a turn more to the east. And as it does, it takes a less favorable path for development over Florida and would mean obviously better conditions. Now, if the European model ends up being correct, again, Tuesday morning would be the main time period we would be, we would be looking at. Based on the current model run, we could see wind gusts in the Tampa Bay area, especially in our coastal areas of right around 65 miles per hour. And the storm could become a hurricane before it makes landfall up in the Florida Panhandle. So the European is a much more aggressive model at this point. Again, a lot of uncertainty on what's gonna happen with this storm between right now with this double barrel low until it gets into the Western Bahamas, which will happen on Saturday or Sunday. At that point, we'll have a much better grip on it I think the low pressure will be more unified and the models will also be able to forecast the storm system much better. So by the middle part of the weekend, we should know much better where the storm is going to be heading and the intensity it will have. Obviously, I'm crossing my fingers for the GFS solution to be correct as it would be the much weaker uh, and less disruptive storm 